for the night. I am drinking a, let's see, I had a point for sugar-free um, vanilla, coffee mate, two points for pumpkin spice, coffee mate, and then I had some stevia. So I'm having a coffee. I'm gonna vlog in the dark. Let me get out of the driveway first. Okay, so I'm on my way to work. If you're new to my channel in the fall, sometimes I vlog in the dark. I don't know if I'm gonna vlog in the dark in my new life, <laughs> my new town or not, because I don't really know what I'm gonna be doing. I don't know what my hours are gonna be like or anything. <coughs> Ooh, and I'm coughing. My throat is so sore right now, and I'm wondering if it's from all the rain. I don't know. So yesterday, I tried to vlog for you guys, and I was using the microphone uh, on my headset, and it was an old microphone. So I lost all of that footage because it was just me going wah, 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 wah. It was ridiculous. If you're new to my channel, I'm Amy. I'm on Weight Watchers Freestyle. This is day three of me trying to get my blue dot. I'm in the process of moving. My highest weight ever was 288. Right now, I'm at 240.6. Uh, my lowest weight on Weight Watchers this round was 229, I think 0 0.2, something like that. And over the past few months, I've gone up uh, because I have not had good self-control during some life stress. So we're working on getting ourselves back under control, getting focused again, as Fat Dag would say, and going back to meetings in a few weeks. So I have to get myself moved first. I am doing coaching on online. Eh, not my favorite thing. I prefer meetings. I think I'm a meeting girl. I just have to find the right meeting when I get moved. And we'll get back to that. So this morning so far, I've had three points for coffee. I had a one point extreme wellness wrap with three eggs on it. So my goal in the mornings so that what I have learned about myself is if I eat a lot of protein, I don't get hungry and I don't need a mid-morning snack. So I try to do really high protein in the morning and then I eat obviously just, you know, I try to bring my lunch. I brought my lunch today and I usually try to have a good bit of protein with that so that I'm not real snacky. And then I usually need a snack on the way home from work, between work and dinner, somewhere in there. And I've done hard boiled eggs, I've done you know, fruit, um, and I've done those Premier Protein drinks, and those have all worked really well for me. So, I have a Premier Protein with me, I have my lunch with me, I'll show you guys that later. The goal today is a blue dot. It's been very rainy, so I haven't been walking as much, and I'd love to get a walk in this evening. I'm hoping it clears off so that I can do that. Other than that, I am in moving mode, like mentally in moving mode. And I am going to film, I told my husband, I'm going to film right before we pack everything up, a complete house tour of our 1924 bungalow with the exterior, the interior. It's not like a show palace and we're not, we're not professionals or anything, but I just want it for posterity. Um, I won't post it until after we move just because that would be weird. <laughs> But um, after we move, I'll post it so you guys can see kind of what we did and where we started and where we ended up. And um, I'll show you pictures of the exterior before it was uh, painted when we first bought it. And maybe I can even dig up some pictures of when we first moved in. But we've really enjoyed this house and it's been really you know, fun to live in an older home. My, hu my husband's taste is not really like this type of house. We live in an area that has a lot of gingerbread houses, so they look, they have almost like a Victorian flair to them. There's a lot of um, spindles and um, trim on the outside of the house that looks kind of frilly and girly. Our house, not so much. We do have the spindles out front. But it's a definite style to the bungalow. It doesn't look craftsman so much, um, although you can take it in that direction for sure. But it has almost, you know, more of a Victorian 
bungalow feel. It's di it's different on the exterior. So when we first bought the house, it was this terrible yellow color, and it took us a while to get the inside sort of decorated and done, and then have money. Uh, we replaced the roof and we painted the exterior. And then after that, you know, people would drive by it and they would slow down and look at the house. And we, I think that that's why we sold it so fast is our house is very well known in the neighborhood. Um, our, you know, all of our neighbors were really excited when we painted it and they just love that we've sort of brought it back to life. Um, and our whole neighborhood is like that. It's all, it's all revitalizing and people are coming in and there's a lot of house flipping going on. And people are not interested in flips. They really want sort of original, you know, homes that they've kept a lot of the original details and, you know, made improvements. And I think we have a good mix of that. So we have the original hardwood floors. Now, obviously, they took out the original cabinets and um, we have the original windows, which I love the original windows, the original doors on the house. Um, but you know, we only have like one original light and obviously they had to update, they updated the bathrooms. So it's a good mix. So somebody that wants to come in and doesn't want to have to deal with a lot of the older, you know, the issues with old homes, but likes the charm of the old homes, you know, that's a good fit for them. And I think that that's what happened with our buyers is they really wanted one of the historic houses in our town but they didn't want you know they still wanted like a nice kitchen and nice updated bathrooms and things um, and I think you could take our house to the next level if you had a lot of money we are not made of money so the attic can be finished out on our house the yard definitely you could do all kinds of things with the yard and we just we haven't done the yard yet and so I'm very excited about our new home I thought that what I would do is film our old house and show you guys that and then I definitely wanted to show you all what we're planning to do with the new house because I love to decorate and I love you know crafty projects and my mom is going to help me so I thought it would be fun to do you know in addition to obviously my Weight Watcher stuff but have some uh, videos of, of the new house and what we're doing to decorate and the progression there if you guys want to see that. Um, if not, you know, I'm sure there's an audience for people that like to look at um, people moving and house, you know, house updates and all that. So I'll just put those on my channel because I'm obviously not going to start another channel for that kind of thing. And you guys can watch or not watch. It'll be kind of fun to see it. So the house that we're moving into is a four bedroom house. Um, it's not that much bigger than our house, but I feel like the space is utilized a little bit better because in our current home, we have a huge dining room that just has unused space. We have a table in there and that's about it. And you could really, you could put a lot more furniture in there, but then it crowds it up. So we've had it both ways. We've had a lot of furniture in there and we tend to like to put our Christmas tree in there sometimes. And the new house has a, has a smaller dining room and kitchen, but then you have a lot more living space, which for us, that's kind of, you know, who we are, especially now that the boys have moved out. So we have a really nice functional kitchen in the new house um, and a nice, you know, a good size dining room for what we're gonna do with it and a little eat-in area that was perfect for the two of us. And then we have a lot of living room space. And then we also have extra space for me to have my own like craft slash work area. My husband to have an office. Um, we'll have room for the boys, guest room. You know, it's just, I think it's gonna be uh, a great fit for us. And we have a garage, which we haven't had a garage None of our homes have had a garage because we've always bought old houses. Except we had a house in Florida that had a garage that was, we owned that house with my parents. So that was different. 
Um, and then we had, a, we've had a couple of rentals with garages, but then we lived in an apartment in New York, with, which, you know, we didn't have a garage there. We actually had two apartments in New York. So the first apartment we had in New York was 800 square feet. It was a two bedroom, one bath. It was so small, <laughs> but it was huge by New York standards. And I just about went crazy in there because it was the bottom floor apartment. It was really dark and I was working nights. And so it was always dark, it was always dark. And the boys, I felt so bad. We moved from like a 3000 square foot town home in Kansas city to this little tiny apartment in New York <clears throat> so that my husband could go to seminary. And <laughs> when we got there, so we told them, you know, we're moving to New York, it's gonna be so exciting, and they were all excited. And I said, there's gonna be lots of kids, and we'll have friends at seminary. The first week we get to seminary, the campus was dead, and then we moved them into this little teeny apartment. And I just remember the two of them being like, you have destroyed my life. Because <laughs> they had, poor things, they had been in a great school, and. Um, we relocated them and sure enough we the four of us had a wonderful time in New York We made a lot of great friends. They had you know, they, they have everlasting memories. We took trips. We lived in Yonkers We took trips to the city at least every week for um, Different we were homeschooling at that time so different field trips the boys and I alone saw just almost every inch of that city I mean we we went to every museum. We just had, we had a great time. We walked up, we walked the streets, we ate local. Um, it was great. So, these people are not gonna let me over, sir. In a mood this morning. In a mood. It's only Tuesday, people. In a grip. Well, I guess I'm not gonna go over. So. That's the story with that. Um, when we moved here, they were so excited. The house seemed huge coming from New York. We bought a 1,700 square foot house. And I remember one of the people in the parish helping us move in and them saying, um, are you sure this house is gonna be big enough for you and the two boys? And you know, cause out here, everything is really big. Like people buy big houses out here on big pieces of land. And my husband and I were like, it'll be great. And it, it was, we've been in the house six and a half years. It was great. But as the boys got bigger, we definitely felt a space crunch. But for us, it was great because we had bought the house at such a good price. Um, and when we were looking, we really couldn't, we got housing quickly exploded in our area to the point where we'd have to pay a lot more money for about the same size house in a, in a less desirable location. So we made the choice to stay put and let our house build equity. And it's really um, such a blessing from God because we, we went into this house 3% uh, down with an FHA loan. And this next house, we're gonna be able to put 20% down with a conventional loan still be able to have money to do the updates and the fixes that we need on the house. So we really are, you know, just extremely blessed. This house has been just a blessing. If I cry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a little stressed out, so I think I'm doing really well and then something will just hit me. If you guys know that moving, there's a lot of grief. I don't know if you've ever moved. <laughs> Most people have moved at least once in their life. But it is, it's really exciting and fun for us. And I'm really, you know, happy about a lot of it. And then I'm really sad about a lot of it. So, um, it's definitely mixed emotions, but. Anyway, I know, I, I know I cry on YouTube. I share a lot of my life on YouTube and it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Just trying to be um, real and authentic with you guys. I think um, leaving the house is going to be one of the hardest things. Because there's just a lot of memories there. And 
not all of them good. You guys know that too. So, I went through some really hard times there when I was working in labor and delivery and on nights when I was, you know, stressed. So, and then we just had some beautiful times and the, and the boys really uh, loved living there. And, you know, we will always just have that as part of our lives. So, it's really neat to to be able to um, still live here and be able to drive by and know that the people that are going to be in it, they already love it as much as we do. So, what a blessing, right? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, anyway, I'm glad we're vlogging in the dark because apparently I'm going to cry this morning. <laughs> Let me drink some coffee. Hold on. Alright, thanks for listening. Um, next, next topic, let's get on to something happy. So, the new house I'm going to, I, I told you guys yesterday, do kind of more of like a farmhouse. Um, kind of modernize this antique thing that I have going on. Which, farmhouse, that's what it looks like to me. It's like, kind of a mix. A traditional and shabby chic and lighting the colors up and stuff. So that, that's going to be fun for us to do that. And I think I can mix some of my husband's aesthetic because he doesn't like modern so much as he just likes real clean lines and um, non-clutter. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to accommodate him on that, but I'm going to try. Um, I definitely like clutter and I have a lot of my my grandmother and I were just into the same thing I guess so she left me her chicken collection which I'll show you guys some of that and she collected chickens and I inherited the chickens and the chickens are sort of a joke but my grandmother used to hide money in the chickens and so you know before we would I would spend a couple weeks with her every summer and before we would go anywhere, she would be like, go in the blue chicken and get $5 out or whatever, you know. And then go in the red chicken and get $100 out. My grandmother was a big believer in always having $1 bills. And so she she would take her paycheck and then she would cash some of it and then get $1 bills and make sure she had them, you know, in her purse or hidden in her chickens or wherever. Um, she's she was so funny. So, I have her chicken collection, and that will be in my kitchen still, so I'm excited about that. Oh, I guess we're all going to slow down quickly. That, that was interesting. Um, I will not miss this commute, you guys. I will not miss this commute. So, I feel like this job that I'm interviewing with, uh, for, yeah, on Thursday, <laughs> I will be in the car a lot. So, I know that there is training I will have to go to in another city. So, that will be fascinating. I did want to do a meetup on October the 27th. I'm still working that out in my brain. But, we're going to meet up in Arlington, Texas. If you want to come meet up with me have lunch and go over. I thought it'd be fun to go to Penzi's and go wander around over there. Let me get my thoughts collected on that and I'll do like an official video and let you all know where we're going to meet up because that's coming up in the next couple weeks. I think what we'll do is meet up maybe in the mall or something like that. And if you guys can give me a head count, I'll know how many people are coming and who to watch out for. Even if it's just a couple of us, that would be fun, I think. And to talk about Weight Watchers, and um, I will film it for the channel. So if you don't want to be, you know, on film, you just tell me at the meetup, and I will, I will not get your face in the film. So we'll do that in a few weeks here, and that will be fun too. And then maybe we can do a little shopping up there for the new house, and get some spices, or go craft shopping. I don't know. If you guys want to go get craft stuff. You know, I'm all about the craft stuff. Stirf is what we call it at my house. 
But anyway, I've been on Etsy a lot looking at farmhouse stuff. My feeling is that I would prefer to actually buy things that are actual antiques and not do a lot of reproduction stuff. So I'm going to go look around some of the antique stores and see what I can find. <clears throat> um, I prefer things that have a history to reproductions, but like Kirkland's has a lot of neat looking farmhouse stuff that is uh, reproduction, but some of it looks pretty... I mean, it's actual metal and that sort of thing. I'm not real big on all the signs that, that say things. I think I, I was looking at having a sign made that has the prayer from St. Philaret of Moscow. It's my favorite prayer to do during the day. And um, it's just <clears throat> sort of a great all-encompassing prayer. I'll try to post it down below for you guys. But there is a shop on Etsy where you can give them the quote and they'll put it on, um, not potato sack cloth. What's that stuff called? The brown stuff. Not raffia. Oh gosh, I've forgotten and I know you guys are telling me the name right now. Anyway, that stuff. The brown stuff. Hmm. And then you, you can frame it. So, whatever. I don't know. I'm losing it. I've lost it officially. Work is going fine. I'm trying to close everything out. We don't have a doctor this week, so I've just been working on organizing and getting things done and researching some of the um, evidence in relation to the job interview that I have on Thursday. It's actually really exciting. Even if I don't get this job, it is such a cool community outreach, and there's so there's just so much value that comes from what these nurses do. That it's just been fascinating reading about it. And I think that you know I'm, I've been all about kind of rounding out my OBGYN experience. I've done um, I've been a doula. I've been a childbirth educator. I've done. You know, postpartum, antepartum, L and D. I've done ambulatory. <laughs> I, you know, I, I've done um, gynecology, oncology. I've just done sort of a little bit of everything. Oh, gynecology inpatient and outpatient, oncology outpatient, um, high risk obstetrics, and now to be able to do community health with OB patients and then. You know, two years of them with pediatric support would just be, like, I just feel like I would be such a well-rounded nurse, you know, so exciting, and to be able to work with some of the community programs, because I, right now, we just refer people out, but I'm not actually, like, doing any kind of case management or anything, um, so it would be great to have I guess you get a caseload and you help those patients find resources. So if they need a support group or if they need WIC, you know, or if they need, you know, temporary, um, they have state funded like temporary emergency funds and things like that or just whatever. They need to find an OBGYN, whatever the, whatever the case may be, working with the health department, department and stuff. I just feel like that would be so interesting, um, and then to develop those relationships would be really great. So I'm very excited to talk to them about it, and even if nothing comes of it, right now it's the only thing I've applied for besides... <laughs> okay, y'all, so here's what I did. A couple weeks ago, I had a little bit of a freak out because I, was, I wasn't seeing any nurse jobs that I wanted. And the only other job that has been interesting to me, sir or ma'am, you just cut me off. God bless you. Um, the only other job that has been interesting to me is an OR job. So there is a OR residency job. What that means is that in nursing, you can go into like a six month residency 
in different specialty areas like the ER, ICU critical care, uh, labor delivery, OR, and this residency program, they really do want you to have at least one year of, of nursing experience. Um, and I also have OR, I circulated the OR for years. So I have scrub experience, all that. Um, but they put you in for six months and they teach you everything about like general surgery. And you work 6.30 to three every day and then you take call because obviously if you have something emergent, like a patient comes in with appendicitis and they need to go back to the OR at 12 and in, you know, in the middle of the night, they call you and you go and you scrub and you do the whole deal. So my mom worked in the OR as a first assist, which a first assist means you hand off instrumentation. You scrub in and you hand off instrumentation and you also suture and close. Hopefully that makes sense what I'm talking about. May not. But I, that sounded very interesting. I don't know if I'm a general surgery person or not, but I do love the OR. In fact, they had a joke. I was a black cloud when I worked in the hospital. Okay, so nursing lingo. <laughs> you have your black cloud nurses, okay? And for whatever reason, they are a magnet. They are a crap magnet. I'm not going to use you know, the curse word for it, just to be nice, um, and you just know that you're going to come in, they're going to give you the hardest assignment on the board, and, and listen, you know it's because they know you can handle it, okay, so you understand that your colleagues really trust you and know you can handle it, okay, but I used to walk in, and I would get my patient assignment, so the in labor and delivery, we have a, a whiteboard where they would write the assignments and in the teaching hospitals. And you kind of keep those boards updated so everybody knows what's going on. And I would always walk onto the unit and they would say, we're sorry, Amy. And you always knew. You would just say, open the OR. Because <laughs> you knew they are going to give you somebody that was like in trouble. And you were going to have to keep them and the baby alive, you know. So, it was very interesting, <laughs> to say the least. So, I would come in and they would always be like, the OR is open, or we're sorry, or whatever. And I would, I just would know that not only would I probably start the night in the OR, I'd probably end the night in the OR. I had nights where I would do three back-to-back -back cases, you know. And they'd be like, well, you already did one. We're going to give you the next one. And this lady is failure to progress. Or this lady just came in and her baby's breech and she's four centimeters dilated or something. And you would just, okay, you know, recover your first patient or hand off your recovery to somebody and then go back in the OR. So that was my, for some reason, I ended up with, you know, the patients were sick. And that's okay. I, I actually learned a lot and... Um, I have, I had some stat OR situations I will never forget. <laughs> there was like, you just, nothing would go right. And everything's flying around the room and everybody's yelling. And then mom and baby survive. And afterwards you're like, that was a mess. <laughs> so, oh boy, don't really miss those days. So I'm wondering if the OR if it would be more of a controlled environment, if that was all that you did, because you're not going from, you know, pushing with a mom for four hours into the OR, that was exhausting um, for, you know, yourself, but also for the mom and the family, and golly, the babies would come out and be just worn out, you know. Or, you know, having like a midwifery patient, and <clears throat> they're, you know, not having any pain control and they're pushing for hours and hours and then they end up they really wanted a natural birth and then they end up in the OR that was always hard I always felt so bad for them as well so we'll see I guess if this doesn't pan out this week then I will start looking at other jobs and I think I'll probably apply for the OR residency um I have several contacts that have people in L&D that if I want to go back to L&D, it sounds like it would be a seamless thing and I would just go back 
and I would have to go back to nights, which is not something that I want to do to myself physically. It's very, very hard on the body and emotionally and all that to do nights. And in specialty nursing, a lot of these specialty areas, you have to start on nights and get in line for days. And so one of the girls that I talked to that's in l and one of the l that I'm looking at, she said right now the wait to go to days is three years. So the thought of myself doing nights for three years is extremely daunting. And then the problem is I, I always go in as an experienced nurse and so then they put you in charge and supervisory roles on nights. And it's stressful, you guys. It's stressful. It's fun. I love it. Labor and delivery will always be my first love, my first passion, you know, uh, just love it. Um, and I don't even know what I love about it, but it's, it's fascinating to me. I find the whole process fascinating. Um, I love my patients, you know, every one of them, even the ones that put me in a headlock, bit me, kicked me, the whole thing. <laughs> God bless them. I love them. <laughs> and you know, screamed at me or whatever. In the end, it was like, you know, you just go through the best of times and the worst of times on labor and delivery. And so you see people at their very best and you see them at their very worst. And it is, you know, it's life and death and everything in between. And it's just an amazing thing. You know, if you're thinking of going into nursing and you want to do labor and delivery, you are just one of my favorite people. L and D nurses have my heart because you, in order to really know what it's like, you have to have worked L and D. So, um, and in terms of that, it's not all about, you know, you kind of have this mental image of this angelic nurse holding a baby. It, that's not it, people. It's blood and gut, sweat, tears, and happiness, joy, sorrow, the whole thing. So, okay, I'm going to stop rambling. I, I think this was an, maybe an epic ramble. I am 31 minutes in. I don't even know if I'm going to show you my food for the rest of the day. Maybe I'll just post this in the car vlog. A little update. Um, I don't, so I have a piece of meatloaf that I made and some green beans for lunch. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, the meatloaf is seven points and then the green beans are zero, and then I put some bacon for two points in that. So I have a nine point lunch. I don't even know what I'm having for dinner tonight. Probably a big salad. So I won't even bore you with that stuff. I'll just edit this and stick it up as a car vlog for today and a little life update and a ramble with Amy. And um, thanks for listening. Stay in orbit today, guys. Get your trackers out. Uh, let's get our blue dots today. And, um, I'll see you later. Bye.